Okay. There it is. There it is. There it is. All right. Let's get it cracking. Let everybody get on in here. And let's see what's going on with it. Doing the late night thing, as we always do. I'm here. You're here. What's going on with y'all, man? Everybody pop on in here. See a lot of the regular regulars up in here. Red Panda, I see you in here. A lot of folks up late still. Um, Miss Deli, is that, um? what's her name? What's up, man? We in here. We in here chopping it up. We're going to get some of the callers in a minute. Everybody pile on in. Glad to have y'all tuning in. We will get some of the calls very shortly because we're not going to be on too long. I always say that, but I'm going to try to keep it short tonight. Um, shout out to everybody in the UK. Well, my UK people, I hope you guys are safe over there. I hope those riots and uh, the uprisings and all of that is kind of slowed down. I don't know what's going on over there. I know we got a lot of UK cats who tap in with us around this time. Do we have any UK people in here now? Raise your hand. What time is it over there in the UK? It must be very early over there. But nonetheless, we're here. Um, don't forget the new version of Microphone Check will be available on our site um, probably next week. You can pre-order on Amazon now. The uncolonized version of Microphone Check. Um, I'm going to do my main show on my YouTube channel probably tomorrow. I didn't get a chance to do it this weekend. And I want to touch on the whole break dancing at the Olympics thing. I'm going to touch on all that stuff. What's up, Grinds? I see you in the building. Did y'all tune in to, to Trump? Trump did a, a Twitter space earlier with Elon Musk. There's a lot of people in there, about a million plus. There's a lot of people in there. I listened to a little bit of it. They were talking about, um, you know, Trump getting hit in the ear and all of that. They were talking about that. Um, and they were kind of going on and on about that for a minute. So I was just kind of dipping in and out. Um, how many of y'all got a chance to hear that? One thing, the left is trying to spin a narrative. They're trying to say that Trump was in the Twitter space slurring his words. He wasn't really doing that. And I'm like, I'm listening. I'm like, no, not really. They're trying to make it seem like, you know, they're trying to do a psychops. They're trying to make it seem like Trump is just as bad as Biden as far as his um, mental state. So they're trying to spin this weird narrative. Um, yeah, Trump, you know, Trump wasn't really slurring. He was just talking regular. So there's a lot of propaganda going on out here. A lot of propaganda. We're going to get some. What's up, um, Miss? Um, Snack, what's up, Sister Aki? So there's a lot of propaganda going on with this stuff. And again, I'm not, you know, I'm not supporting anybody. I just, I'm, I'm supporting empowerment. I'm supporting empowerment. Um, because the Trump administration, I, I saw some kind of 20-point plan that they had for when Trump gets in office. He didn't mention anything about us. He didn't mention anything about doing something for black people. So again, I'm not, I'm not on that train. Um, y'all got to put something forth for us to vote for. So, you know, I'm not going to vote for the next guy just to vote against somebody. They got to put something there for me to get out here and actively support. And again, Trump ain't really bringing nothing to the table specifically for us. And another thing with Trump, I mean, Trump, this was kind of a slam dunk for Trump. Trump could have been way in the lead of um, Kamala, but Trump is, you know, trying to pander to that MAGA base. And, you know, that's going to shoot him in the foot. You know, no pun intended, by the way. Um, let me get some of these calls. A lot of folks are making requests right now. Let's get Jocko. We'll get Jocko, then we'll get Trey in the building. Jocko, then we'll get Trey. What's up, Grinds? Jocko, want to unmute your microphone? We're getting these people trying to get in early. All right, we'll get Trey in the building. Trey, Monty, well, hold hello? On. Well, go ahead, Jocko. Yeah, how you doing, Brother Tariq? Uh, 
I was the one that sent you the email a couple of years ago. Told you the guy was on Crenshaw uh, bootlegging your your, uh, your your DVD Maroon um, American Maroon. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know who that was. So yeah, I hollered at him about that. So yeah. So yeah, listen. Uh, can I get can I get your current email? There's a video. A Democratic Shield put a video out directed at what he said black, called black YouTubers, but it was primarily directed at you. I want you to see it. Okay. Um, yeah, you can send it info at Tariq dot la. Um, but yeah, yeah, you know, you got a lot of these Democratic Shields. They're running amok out here now. So, you know, it's probably. You know, it's 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 probably a nothing burger, man. I, I really don't entertain these Democratic shields. It's so much of them, and so many of them. So you know, they they are in our spaces now. You know, they they stay in our spaces. They stay trolling and whining and complaining, and they try to disrupt the energy because if we have any legitimate concerns about what these politicians are bringing to the table, and we're really getting it from. The left wingers. We're really getting it from a lot of the Democratic shills. I want y'all to understand, man. A lot of the the dangerous vitriol that we're getting is from the damn Democrats, man. The disrespect and the vitriolic hatred and contempt that's coming from the Democrats, man. This shut up and vote, and if you ain't black, if you don't vote for them, and you better get your booty to the pole, and you better. Black men better respect black women and vote for Kamala Harris. All of this disrespectful ass talk, all of these op ed pieces. They had Michael Eric Dyson write something for the LA Times disrespecting black society. Notice the media gives these people all types of platforms to disrespect us. Everything is about disrespecting us. Let me talk to the black family for a minute, man. What for real? I, I, what are you supporting the Democrats for? For real? Not to say that you're a Trump supporter, because I'm not a Trump supporter. But what the hell are you supporting the damn Democrats for? The whole lesser of two evils thing. You better understand when that ain't really practical. Who's the most evil? The Democrats are talking to us crazy right now with nothing but disrespect and contempt. And the thing is, we sit up here and elevate all these groups and they come over to undermine us. They sit here and you got Kamala Harris telling us what the hell she ain't gonna do for us, but she's doing everything for everybody else. And with that Asian hate crime thing, remember, it was black people who were being targeted with that. They were targeting black people with that. It was black people getting led off in handcuffs for having arguments with Asian people. They were using that to target us. They use us to to browbeat us with the whole LGBT stuff. When they got bills and protection for the LBGT community, who were they saying were the villains? The villains were us, black people. They were saying, well, all the homophobia in the black community. Remember, some of y'all got short memories. They were using us as the boogeyman. These are the Democrats. These are the people we voted in. We voted these people in, and then they turn around and use us as a boogeyman to prop up these other groups, Hell, we, even with the Jewish community. They don't sit up and put these white supremacists on blast. They start talking about, well, Farrakhan and all of these, Nick Cannon and... Um, Kanye, they make black people. Kyrie Irving. You understand what I'm saying? That's the Democrats doing that. Throwing all of these black people under the bus, painting them as homophobic, or, or I mean, I'm anti-Semitic. Painting them as anti-Semitic. You see? And we sit up here and elevate these people. We gotta say, man, enough is a damn enough. What are you, what are you supporting these people for? For real. And the thing is, nobody really has an answer. Nobody really has an answer as to why they're still supporting the Democrats, particularly Biden and Kamala, other than, oh, well, Trump is going to get us because you let the left wing media. And remember, the, the Hollywood media is left wing. It's a bunch of white liberals who run that. 
and look at the way they portray us, again, we we got this thing where people pretend to like us. We too many of us like lies. White liberals, they've mastered the art of lies. Malcolm X taught us that. See, I like honest white supremacists. Just let me know how you get down the minute you walk in the door. Then we're good. Now, I know your position. I know how far I can go with you. I know my boundaries. I know your mindset. Okay, so whatever business we need to conduct by necessity, let's conduct that business by necessity. The problem is black folks get in these situations with these white liberals and you think that they're your friend. I want black folks to understand many of these Karen videos that we see. These are from white liberals. These are in white um, liberal areas or areas where the white liberals are moving into. Whenever you see these Karen videos, there's always a black person trying to get into a swimming pool, a black person trying to get into a building and some Karen is on the phone. Um, harassing them and calling the police on them. And then you find out these Karens are some kind of Democrat city council member somewhere, or there's some Democrat nonprofit um, um, coordinator. They always got these jobs somewhere where there's some kind of democratic money going on and they're the main ones calling the police on your ass. You understand? We better understand the game out here. These white liberals and all of their flunkies have been a problem for us. They're not our friends. <clears throat> and out here in LA, we're getting targeted by them. The black business sector out here in LA, we're getting targeted by the Democrat liberal white supremacists, man. These are the ones who are targeting our businesses out here. They're the ones sending the, the essays to our businesses to sabotage and vandalize and all of that stuff. Got to be very real. What's up, Juicy Genius? I see you in here, beloved. That's why I always open the phone lines up to some of these Democrat cats to really say why you're supporting them. And nobody can really give a good answer. And then the Democrat shields come in, but, you know, they're Democrat shields, so they're going to say whatever talking points the DNC sends to them. Um, let's get, um, AO, I think that's your name, brother. AO. Hey, what's up, Tariq? How you doing, man? I'm good, man. How are you, brother? I'm doing good, man. I love your spaces, dude. I'm always on just listening to what you have to say. So I think you got a lot of insight. Um, I do want to ask you a question about, uh, just the state of hip hop and R and B yeah. in the U S I'm from New Zealand. So I li okay. I've listened to a lot of it growing up. It's been a big, um, you know, it's huge. It's, uh, yeah, I love it, but Oh, yeah. Here's the thing, right? The problem I have with it is I feel like, don't you feel like there's a lot of degeneracy, you know, especially with Megan Thee Stallion and Cardi B and all that stuff? Like, how do you feel like that's affecting the the youth? Well, the thing is, I, and I've, I've been saying this when I was on my press run, the problem is um, there is no balance no more. The degeneracy is cool, as long as there's balance. There's always been sexualized lyrics in hip-hop, especially starting in the late 80s and through the 90s. There's always been the sexualized stuff in there, but we had the balance in it. We would have the Rakims and the Nazis and the public enemies and people like that to balance that out. And even with the women rappers, we had um, Lil' Kim, we had Foxy Brown. They were doing their raunchy thing in the 90s. But we had the Queen Latifahs and the Lauren Hills and um, people like that to balance them out. MC Light, there was a balance in it. Now there is no balance. We're just seeing one sector of it and it's all raunchy. And that's where the problem is. But, but I won't say that that's going to affect the minds of the youth so much. It it creates a certain perception of women when it when the women are doing it i don't like that perception and that's the only perception of black women that we get because historically whenever there's negative images of black women and just black people in general there has been a an onslaught of violence towards us because those images are used to justify um violence against us um even with children back in the Jim Crow era, they would, white advertisers would put these advertisements up of 
sexualize images of black children. They've always done that. Um, and with these harsh derogatory images of black people, we see the rise of lynchings. There's always been a correlation there. And when we see the promotion of the sexy reds and the glorillas and all of that, the image of black women being degenerate hood rats, we start seeing situations like Sonia Massey, you understand? And then you have a bunch of white supremacists and even folks in law enforcement trying to justify that woman being executed in her home because, see, they look at us as one big Negro. So when they see a black woman, all of them are either Lizzo or Sexy Red. You understand? And going back to Lizzo, that's another thing. Lizzo, I hated when she was running around flopping that big flappy flat booty around all over the place. That's a horrible look. And when you do that, that devalues the women in the community. So when something bad happens, when all these sisters in, end up missing, then I, so what? You know, that's the narrative. There's no outcry from the dominant society. And also, let's be real, internally, the outcry is not where it's supposed to be. Because you see these images of yourself and each other, then you start devaluing each other. You understand? So that's why I go out of my way to try to create a balance of, of us looking and acting decent. I try to have these events where you have upscale black people and upstanding black people talking and acting like they got some damn sense. See, it's going to be up to us to put these images out here. That's the reason why I started the Hidden Color series, family. That was the number one reason why I started the Hidden Color series. I started the Hidden Color series, I, I first started in 2010. The reason why is because if you remember, some of you guys are kind of young. I do have a lot of young people because some of you guys are in your early 20s. Raise your hand if you're in your early 20s. I got a lot of Gen Z's in here. Raise your hand if you're in your early 20s. Sometimes I forget how young my audience is. Um... 2008 was that was that 15 years ago what was that uh around 15 years ago right some of you some of you guys were like seven some of y'all like seven eight years old around that time but when we started the hidden colors series the movies that were out at that time it was movies like the butler the blind side uh, the Help, Precious, these were the movies that were out, and these were horrible images of us. These were absolutely despicable images of us, especially that, that Precious movie. You know, that, that was degenerate filth. I don't even know how that got greenlit. Well, I know, but that type of degenerate filth, that was a horrible, horrible movie. And just the way it depicted us, it was a pointless movie. Um, there was no rhyme or reason to that movie other than to make white, feel, white people feel better about not being black. Just to show black people as toe up and as raggedy and as dysfunctional as we can be. Horrible movie. Horrible. Yeah, Lee Daniels, I don't know where that filth came from in that man's soul to put some shit like that out into the public. Horrible movie. But you saw they gave it all types of praises and awards and accolades. And they tried to pawn it off on Tyler Perry and Oprah. But it was really a lot of white people behind the scenes because when it started winning those Oscars, all of the white people would jumped out there to get their awards. The white people were jumping on stage and knocking niggas over to get their awards. You, you dig? So when I saw that type of filth out, I said, we're, we're going to have to balance this out. We're going to have to have a counter narrative to all of this degenerate filth being portrayed on us. And we got to stop waiting on the dominant society because that's the thing. People kept saying, well, man, we need to get Hollywood need to do something different. They need to have more positive images of us. They need to do this. They need to do that. Oh, Hollywood ain't going to do that. I, I'm, I work out here in Hollywood. They ain't going to do that. 
they don't have an interest in doing that. That's going to have to be something that we have to do from the grassroots. And that's what we did. We created the Hidden Colors series. So I put that together. I said, let me get the let me do the blackest documentary I can do. Let me get all the black scholars and black heavyweights and just talk about black history and all of the contributions that black people have done and made globally. Put that movie together, became the hugest black history documentary series ever. That became a whole movement within itself. <clears throat> so much so people started to act like there was some kind of secret white money behind it. It wasn't. Don't ever let nobody tell you that lie. Whenever something that's black and successful, you know, the Sambo's always got to put white daddy somewhere in the mix. There's no white money behind that. That was all us doing that. Breaking records all around the world. We, we can do that stuff. I know our power. I know what we can do. I know what we're capable of. I want us all to understand what we're capable of. We're capable of um, maintaining our own media apparatus. We're made... We're capable of maintaining our communities like we're supposed to. We're capable of maintaining nations and societies. We just got to get the right minded people around us. Let's get um the let's get brother our New York brother brother Caliph. Brother Caliph. Brother Caliph, you there? All right, brother Caliph ain't saying nothing. Let's get. Ely Detroit in the building, then we'll get the um, Negro Black Knight Heritage. Um, Ely Detroit. What's up, bro? What's up? How you doing? Man, I'm good, man. What up, though? Not much, man. You know, I'm just listening to you. I ain't got too much. So I'm up at this uh, punk ass job and shit. But uh, you at Amazon? No, motherfucker, no. <laughs> Let me you, you working in the middle of the night, either Amazon or the damn GM plant somewhere. Where you working, brother? No, no, I'm at a plant, but I don't want to disclose. I'm a, okay, there you go. Okay. I'm it's skilled, at I'm a plant. Skilled. We know you at a plant somewhere, but go ahead. I'm, at, I'm skilled trades, dog. I'm skilled trades, so I'm just chilling. All right, there you go. There you, you go. We don't want to mess it, your forklift job up. We don't want to no, mess it up. No, skilled trades, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 Robotic programmer, motherfucker. There it is, my man. My man. Like so everything good with you, brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I'm just uh, you know, give everybody a heads up. You know, uh, you know, WHPR Detroit, right? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I, I I shared it uh a couple of uh, you know, uh, what they call it uh websites or whatever, so y'all can do business with them. They open for business, and they got their own app too. You know, what I'm saying oh. so we got so we got a. Uh, television station, you know, that we can utilize and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm, okay. I'm, about, to, I'm about to share it on there, too. So y'all okay. just uh, do business with them if y'all can, though. All right. So we'll look, in, we'll look into that, man. Thank you so much, brother. Appreciate All right, brother. it. All right. We'll look into it. Um, the Negro Black Knight Heritage. Hey, good afternoon or good morning, um, Brother Tariq. Um, um, good post about that. Um. That nurse practicing a medical apartheid, calling out Negroes and N words and whatnot. Um, that woman's been removed from her oh, position. Good. So like less than seventy two hours flat. Like, yo, we 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 setting um Negro FBA records all around the place. Um, when it comes to job removal of people that are um against our lineage. Um, good. That needs to be done. That needs to be done. Absolutely. Because they're quick to pull the plug out on a Negro or a Black American person. Uh, for no apparent reason, but when people actually doing things to aggrieve our community, they need to be taking the task accordingly. So I'm I'm glad that the people was having those letters, those stock letters locked in barrel, and they were flooding that um the Ohio's medical professional staff with that. So less than 72 hours flat, family. I think that we need to give a, like a royal salute to that. Because that was a good effort of this is how you remove people that are toxic in our community that's making a profit in our community. Um, yeah. Now we need to now we need to put a black person or a black nurse's partition lady or whatnot in that building to make a um, example saying that this could be any of y'all y'all tethers. It don't matter where y'all from. You go around disrespecting black people. We're going to take you out of commission um, where you can't make no money. Um, that's the first thing. The other thing I just wanted to highlight was um, talking a little bit more about these um, 
just those individuals in the professionals in the college campuses targeting our youth um there needs to be a consorted effort to get them out of these positions family they should not be in any position of authority especially govern our loved ones our children and our elderly so i i just wanted to report on that i found that that was very interesting and i'm very proud that that woman's removed because she was in the state that i was born in the city i was born in so yeah salute to that Good looking out on that. Yeah, man. For those who don't know, there's this woman, she's an African immigrant who was calling some FBAs all types of N-words and slaves. And so I know a lot of people made calls to that um, facility and they were right trying there. to get her out of there. What's up, Auntie? Um, Hello? What's the, who is it? This Auntie? No, I'm sorry, man. It's my mom's account, man. I try to, you know, log in on mine, but you can't hear my, my own volume, so... Okay, okay. So what's going on, man? Uh, nothing, man. I was just, um, I've been watching you for a while, man. A lot of stuff you've been saying is the truth, you know, especially with these immigrants coming over here. You know, I'm from California. I just graduated high school, you know. Love it. A, now, a how black, old are you, brother? How old are you, by the way? Um, I just turned 18, so. There you go. Cool. Oh, yeah, wait, I just going, wanted to you, ask you By the something. way, by the way, hold on. By the way, you, are you going to college? Uh, yes, Trey Tech. There you go, my man. I appreciate that. Go ahead. Now, go ahead. Um, I was gonna ask you that. Um, I feel like when if Kamala do wins, man, it's gonna be very bad for the black, you know, the FBAs. Yeah. Because I feel like we're going, we're having another war, and I think she's trying to like she's going to replace us into a war and have all these immigrants, illegal immigrants, come over here. So I feel like she's going, they're going to try to replace the black Americans, you know. Yeah. Over here, because I heard immigrant illegal immigrants can't go to war, right? Um. It, well, I'm trying to see how that thing works. Um, I wonder if they have to be born here. I don't know the ins and outs of it, but, um, yeah, they're going to flood the zone with a lot of immigrants over here. Thank you for the call, by the way. Listen, yeah, man, listen, if Kamala gets in, it's a wrap for us, man. Boy, we, we going to go through it, man. I'm telling you, we, we are going to get hit from every damn side with Kamala in office I, I, these boule bootlegs and y'all sitting up here thinking y'all got a sister girl you got to be the dumbest mf -er on the planet to think that's the case that's not no damn that ain't your damn sister girl if you think that there's going to be some kind of benefit for black people and if you're happy with that symbolic nothing burger you dumb as hell and the problem is a lot of black folks like a lot of symbolisms. That's a lot of black folks like a lot of symbolisms. You're like some, a symbol is better than nothing. You're like, if I ain't gonna get nothing, at least pretend you like me. You dig? We like to play pretend too damn much. You go to the club and pretend, let's pretend we got some money. Let's pretend we're balling out. Let's pretend that you're a model. Let's pretend I'm a, a uh, successful rapper. Let's pretend that I'm a I'm a real estate agent. Hey, we like to play pretend too damn much. To our demise, we got to get off that. We got to start thinking in terms of power. Power ain't about sitting around lying to each other. Power is about telling the truth, understanding what your weaknesses are, and understanding what's going to make sense for your group in the long run you better learn how to play chess get off this checkers mindset there's certain chess moves that you got to do for real and when people start talking about chess moves they don't know what they're talking about they don't know how to play chess niggas are talking about checkers chess moves is when you do things strategically and you know that there's going to be a strategic outcome Sometimes you got to sacrifice a couple of pawns in order to protect the queen and the king. See, we got to understand how to do that. See, we get this thing where we want immediate, instantaneous gratification too much because we've been downtrodden so long. We Anything that looks like a, a so-called victory that's immediate, we'll take it. That ain't how it works, man. We thinking that we're going to get some kind of easy win. No, you're not getting an easy win. We thought that with Obama. That was the mistake we made with Obama. 
we cannot make the Obama mistake. You dig? Obama was detrimental to black society. Obama was a nothing burger, a big symbolic ass nothing. We didn't get anything from Obama except slaughtered in record numbers. We got slaughtered in record numbers under Obama. His administration didn't do a damn thing to protect us. We didn't get no benefits, no resources, nothing. Other groups did. The floodgate was open to the LGBTs, immigrants, um, the, the red natives. They all got something. The police, he was signing protection bills for them when they were slaughtering us left and right. We got nothing under Obama. That's when we at least realize, hey, wait a minute, just because somebody is brown and they say that they're black, that doesn't mean they're from our lineage. So we did learn how to fully delineate from that nonsense. All right. Brother Caliph, you in here? Caliph or Caliph? Okay, Brother Caliph ain't saying nothing. Is chaos in here? Chaos? Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? What's up, KS? How are you, man? I'm doing good in here. I'm good, man. What's up, come on, brother? Yeah, yeah. So I just want to say big ups again with the uh, microphone check documentary. It's a very important fight to have. I'm in my 30s, and some of the, a lot of the names that you mentioned in that documentary, I don't know. So it's very important. Oh, yeah. Uh, also, with the Olympics, I just want to say I'm proud of like Simone Biles and all the black people bringing in the gold. Um, yeah, it's been impressive. But have you heard about this situation with Jordan Childs? Um, she's supposed to get the bronze medal in the floor exercises as a black woman. Um, and they tried, they, they gave it to Romania. Like they said, they undervalued the difficulty of her exercise. And then her coach complained. And then he said, you were four seconds too late. Now the USA team fought and said, well, no, it was 47 seconds. And then they said, well, you can't do an appeal. They're really playing a uh, sister. Um, and it's just, it's infuriating. So I don't know if you heard about that. We, I, I've heard a little bit about it, but I did not know all the ins and outs of it. Yeah. Yeah. Basically they're saying that the judges got it wrong, but the team USA coaches didn't complain fast enough. They oh. had 60 seconds to complain and they complained in 64 seconds, but the video evidence shows otherwise. So they gave it to Romania and it, it's, it's a real show and it's, it's infuriating. Like she wow. did nothing wrong. Wow. Oh, I'm, I'm going to look into that. I'm, I'm going to look into that and find out all the details of it. But I did hear a little bit of something about that. Sheba Kita, what's up, ma'am? Hey, Tariq. How's, how's my family doing? How's everybody? We are good. Kita, how are you, beloved? That's wonderful. I love the microphone check. It was Thank splendid. You really hit on all the points and having all the pioneers in that film. I went to the premiere. I don't know if you remember, you, you see so many people. I saw you real quick at the New York pre, um, premiere. So it was just excellent. Yes, so I can't yeah, wait to see it on Blu-ray. I got to order yeah. it. I yes, have it. a Blu-ray. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, because I missed the last live you did. Did you, say, did you see what Ricky Smiley said, how he basically disrespected us, calling us practically calling us stupid and bigging up like Roland Martin and oh you know we got to support Kamala this that and the third like did you hear about that because I, I, really, I heard he was really going off I heard he was going off and um I, I'm not surprised and I like Ricky Ricky you know I've been on Ricky's show before um but a lot of these guys man under you know the they get little kickbacks from the Democrats. The Democrats do a lot of advertising on their shows. Their radio stations are clicked in with the boule and the, the, the white liberals. So a lot of black radio mm -hmm. is basically their extensions of the damn Democratic Party. That's why you have all of these black radio jocks just really jumping through hoops for the Democrats. And basically trying to shame the audience. If you have, if you just question Kamala or these people about anything, they got these boule cats and these fraternity cats out here shaming folks. That's their job. Notice the, the so-called black radio cats, how they get out. And another thing, family, speaking of microphone check, 
We didn't get a lot of, you want to know why we didn't get a lot of promotion from black radio? That's why. Can we talk turkey tonight? And again, I've been on Ricky Smiley's show many times. I've been on his show, all of these guys. You know, I've been on it. And Ricky's one of the funniest comedians out there. He's a funny brother. But again, I I understand where they're coming from. You dig? I understand the, the, the politics quote unquote behind everything but the democrats run these stations and they got to toe the line for them and there's a reason why you haven't seen black radio really promote microphone check even though if you go i think on amazon it's like number one now and the the new version is still not technically fully out yet. And it's the pre-orders got it back to number one. It was number one last month. And then you have the, the white Latinos making these false copyright reports. And then my lawyer hit them up because that's another thing, making false copyright reports. Even if your um, images are in the film legally, because there's case um, law that says you have to first consider fair use. There are laws that saying, hey, y'all can't really do that. You can't sit up here talking about there's a copyright violation knowing that it's a documentary film. So there are laws stating that you have to consider uh, fair use first before you make a copyright claim. You have to say, okay, was my image used in the context of fair use? And there are case laws stating that you have to do that. So yeah, I got my lawyers on the case big time letting folks know, don't try to be malicious. Because the thing is, what happens, a few of the Puerto Rican photographers from back in the day, they got upset because we said that Puerto Ricans were not the um, creators of hip hop. So they tried to take their ball and go, nah, 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 you can't play with my ball. You, You dig? It became that. And my thing is, look, Um, a lot of those images we took out, even though legally we could use them, but I don't want anybody coming around saying that, Hey, um, you used a Puerto Rican's photograph and you needed me. You know, I I didn't want that at all because we don't, you know, but I digress as far as that. But again, the reason why you haven't seen all of these so-called black radio stations and hip hop stations with black folks on them. They haven't promoted the movie. Now they'll promote people who get up here telling that 50, 50 Latinos and blacks, they'll have them on there lying. If you notice that they'll have them on there lying all day. Because again, that whole black and Brown coalition, that's Democrat liberal talk. That's what the Democrats promote. And the Democrats get these so-called black radio stations and they put Latino program directors and a lot of these black so-called black radio stations, especially out here in L.A. and Miami and all of these other places in New York. Ding. So, you know, they're real funny style. And even some of the other hip hop blogs that I do, a lot of them, you know, even though. I've been on some of the hip hop blogs and it does phenomenal numbers for them. You know, there, there is pushback there, but they like the numbers. Yeah. But there's a reason why you haven't seen them promote the movie like that. That's why, um, my PR firm, they had me doing all of these mainstream white shows. We're doing like major big shows that's reaching like, you know, New York, five, 10 million viewers. In D.C., millions of viewers. We're doing the white shows. Yeah. We had to go above the hip-hop crowd to really promote the movie. That's why it's doing so, so excellent, and it's changing the game. And then people had the nerve to question why I went on Vlad. You know, Vlad was one of the, the few large hip-hop blogs that would talk about the film. Yeah, I'm going to promote the film. People want to talk about code. I'm not, I'm the only one on code who's on that level with the kind of numbers that I get. Again, sometimes we start making progress to the point where you look around and you're the only one standing there. 
and all of these other folks are supposed to be on some damn code with you, and they're not. You yeah. So you got to start doing things that's practical. Let's get Juicy Genius in the building. Juicy Genius in the building. What's happening, Juicy? Peace and power to you, Tariq. Good evening. Hey. Good morning. Um, it's 325 a.m. on the East Coast here in Atlanta. I wanted to say congratulations on a successful PR campaign. I'm here in Atlanta. I did get to see you on multiple major uh, local mainstream media outlets during your microphone check PR campaign. So congrats on that. Thank you so much. Yes, indeed. And I just want to say real quick um, and bring up a couple points in regards to the Democratic political gaslighting that I see a lot from their paid operatives and uh, online digital influencer people that they're paying off yeah. to come in and say and make comments as if black men have the right to decide who they want to choose as far as their political candidate for any election, right? Mm -hmm. So, but to tell a black man that he's low informational or he doesn't know what he's talking about, they're idiots, it's a form of political gaslighting. I need black Americans to really understand and start using that language. Stop allowing these operatives to um, this degenerate our, our views politically and minimize our voices and our, and our decisions as far as who we decide to uh, support politically. I yield my mic. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate you. Yeah, man, we got to stop letting folks shame us. We're not, man. We don't, especially with Kamala Harris. Dude, we don't owe Kamala Harris nothing. We don't owe her loyalty nothing. Yeah? We don't owe them nothing at all. Um, The Eastie... Hello. Hey, Easty, how are you? It's Esty, esthetician, Esty boss. Oh, okay, my bad, sis. You know, my, I'm I'm kind of an old player, and I can't see worth a damn. Look, I'm think. old too. I'm trying to keep up with them. I'm trying to shorten yeah. things and make it all cute and savvy or whatever. Yeah. Hi, Tariq. So, so I have doing, like two ahead. questions for you. I'm gonna keep it really short. I do want to say peace to the God. You are so amazing. Thank I you, first dear. discovered you back in like 20. 12 or 2013 oh. and I worked at this hair salon this girl was like you never seen hidden colors I was like what's hidden colors and she put me on the hidden colors and I've been following you ever since and you have helped me navigate like so like the streets the game work life love like everything so I do want to give you that props and I don't really speak up a lot but I wanted to speak up tonight because um I'm working corporate America and you know how it is being a black woman in corporate America. And I did read your foundational um, black American race baiter book, mm -hmm. but I did have a situation. I'm going to just be, you know, keep it 100 tonight. Um, I had a situation at work where um, I got written up. I, I didn't even, I don't get written up. I do everything meticulously, perfectly, you know, but I had a situation where I got sabotaged at work and it was blatant to me and I never brought it up to Was it my... Tethers? Was it Tethers? Yes. I, why, why did I know that? Are you in yeah. D.C.? You're in yeah, D.C., right? Yeah, I'm in D.C., yeah. That's what I knew it was Tethers. Go ahead, sir. I already knew. Go ahead, sis. Yeah, so I guess my, my question is, I won't even, like, hold everybody with the long, long of it. It's how, like, in 2024... How as a black woman, foundational black American woman, because you know how you talked about how they'd be like, oh, let me, and I'm in skincare. Let me give y'all a uh, foundation on that. I'm in skincare. They always want to touch your face. They always want to touch your hair. You know, damn, if you do, if you're, if you're, young, if you, you are older and cause I'm 41, but I look, I don't look 41. Yeah. So I get a, I get a hard time with that. Like you, they sleep on me because I look young. Then they realize I'm old and then they be still mad. Like, it's just too much. Like, you hired me because I'm going to do a good job. And then you want to write me up because I do a great job. Like, you want to touch my hair. You want me to, you want to, you want to do all those weird things you talked about in your book that they do where they cross lines and they want to say little things and the microaggressions and the, you know, the per per uh, performance uh, punishment. And it's like, it's just too much. And I just... Now, what was the actual it. reason for them writing you up? What was the the, the official the, reason? So basically, honestly, I 
I feel like I've been like a sacrificial lamb. Like, and that was the way my mother raised me and any other FBA person in this room knows how our parents are. You show up, you do a good job, you keep your head down, you do what you're supposed to do, you do it well. We, we, they go low, we go high, whatever, whatever. So I did that. I did everything my parents told me to do. I get sabotaged. At that point, to me, I lost my motivation because I'm giving you everything. I'm sacrificing things in my personal life and things to do a good job and be a team player and do all this crap they tell us to do. And then do you think it's okay to go into my calendar? Like I teach during the day. So okay. someone went into my calendar and basically changed my schedule, but I'm ahead of myself two weeks. So I already know my schedule. So I'm already planned out. So I caught it. But at that point, I wasn't even angry. I was disappointed because it was like after everything that I've, I've done and contributed to the skincare community, the hair care community, the community, someone thought it was OK to just go in the system and sabotage me blatantly like that. And I mentally checked out and I take responsibility for everything just falling to shit after that. But I had no incentive to keep it together. So I, I took the write-up. I took the write-up like a G. Because I was mm. like, I mean, it could have gone worse. I could have no job for saying what I really wanted to say on some of these situations. I, I could have had no job or been in jail for some of the people crossing the line so, and touching so, me inappropriately. Uh, you know? so, you, so you missed some appointments because your schedule was changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you know who did the, the schedule change behind your Honestly, back? Honestly, I don't even really, I didn't even focus on who did it. It was the point that someone thought it was okay to do. Mm. Like the fact that you thought it was okay to do it. Mm. Like that's 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 where I'm like, I need help from you. It's like, how do I navigate now that they've written me up and I gotta go back to work tomorrow? What's what's this day forward look like after they've reprimanded me, after someone sabotaged me, but I get reprimanded for getting sabotaged. Are you you is it making is it coming together? Right. So that's why I'm asking if you knew who actually did the schedule change. If you knew I don't know how to prove that. I mean, I could ask IT if someone like went in this, you know, it would have to be like a that kind of digital paper trail or whatever, you know, like how do you how do you find out who did it? I wouldn't be able to see that. Right. So because you don't want it to happen again. This is why I'm asking that. You don't want okay. that. So you got to, you know, make sure of the people that you're associating with up there to, to see who's doing that type of stuff. Cause if they can do it once, they'll do it again. So it's good to know who's doing that. And now that you know that they're doing that, you need to be abreast of your schedule at all times. You need to keep your eye on it at all times. Um, if somebody's changing the schedule, somebody would have to authorize a schedule change. Somebody's yes. off make the schedule there and usually that's some kind of supervisor and usually in places like that they'll have a tether as a supervisor either a white person or a tether you understand yes so who are you? you look for the forehead all right who whoever's forehead is big <laughs> and then that, that's who did it all right <laughs> thank you so much i'm so i had it took me a lot of guts to get up on here but they kind of fired me up a little bit today and I was like, you know what, though? I took it like a G. All the real bosses, you ain't a boss until you get in trouble. So yeah. I was like, I ain't never got in trouble. So this mm -hmm. was the right of passage for me. So I was like, I'm getting on here. I'm asking a question because I got to oh, figure yeah. out how to navigate after this. No, you're going to be all right. It's just tell the shit. You're going to be fine. You're going to be absolutely fine, sis. All right, beloved. All right. Thank hey, you. Y'all better, better know how to move and shake at these jobs, man. Don't get frustrated. It's just... Those jobs are just a microcosm of the regular society. That's how you got to look at it. These jobs are just a microcosm of everywhere else. It's going to be the white supremacists, really behind the scenes, running things. And then there's going to be a tether supervisor somewhere that they, they deliberately put the tethers there to keep an eye on you. They'll do the Kamala thing. They'll they'll sister girl you and all of that jive talk and then go behind the scenes telling all your damn business and doing things to, to sabotage and undercut you. You understand? That's why I'm tripping on folks going for the whole Kamala Harris con job. If you buying that sister girl con job, they, the Kamala Harris is that, that supervisor at your job who's always getting you written up. You wonder why you're getting written up. It's the Kamala's at the job who's up here laying up with the bosses.
And I've talked about this before, even in my book, FBA Race Bed. I talk about how them bed witches, they be laying up with the boss, and they're the eyes and ears, and they come around you, sister girling you, and telling everything. They're run down to HR telling on your ass. So y'all better understand these office politics out here. Let's get Miss Melanin. Hold on, let me try Miss Melanin. Let me let you up. Miss Melanin, hop on. Miss Melanin, where you at? Miss Melanin, where you at? Let's try one more time. And then we'll get T Way in the building. Let's get T Way in here. And then we'll get Ikeem in here. All right, T-Way, you good? Yep, yep, I'm here. What's up, T? How are you, bro? I appreciate you letting me up. Man, that, uh, the last caller, is that why? You're very, you're very low, brother. You're very low. You got on... Hey, can you hear me? Got any better? No, let's try it again. You got on headphones or something, earphones? Yeah, I got head. I, I, do. I do. Yeah, let's get, yeah, you got to send them back to the Wish app and then take them off so we can hear you now. All right, I'll drop down and try again. Appreciate you. Okay, brother. Yeah, they gave my brother the Wish app ear plugs, and they don't work. Those are not the right AirPods. Those don't work. This brother got some AirPods for a T-Mobile sidekick. This nigga in jail broke some AirPods, and it, it don't sound right. Ikeem, hop on, brother. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Ikeem. How are you? How you doing, bro? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm fine. <clears throat> this is uh this is probably more of a, a Mac lessons type of a question. Well, let's get but it. Then. Let's go. I was curious. What's your message for the FBA brothers like myself who are married to somebody that's from the Africa diaspora, should I say? Okay. For example, my wife, she's East, she's East African. She's Kenyan. Okay. I've been to Kenya like three times. I didn't see things over there where, you know, it, 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 it makes me a little upset when I hear Africans, specifically Kenyans, you know, talk about the, the stereotypes of African-Americans. When I seen the shit over there, plain as day, like that's, it's like, you can't talk shit about us when what the fuck y'all got all kind of shit going on over there. I was there. Oh yeah. So my, my, my question is like my wife is it's like, she doesn't, I, I give her the benefit of the doubt. She wasn't born in America. Okay. So she doesn't understand the historical context that we have in America as far as our black history. But I also noticed that she doesn't really have a care for it. So I guess my question is, like, how do you go about what, what's your message to, to the FBA men who are married to the, uh, you know, immigrant, yeah. should I say? Right. Well, the thing is, you can't force anybody to care about something because a lot of non-FBA folks, they, they just don't care. They're all about getting their come up. You understand? That's just the long and short of it. My thing is what we don't let them do is show disrespect. You, you understand? Yeah. So a lot of times cats are married to these foreigners and then their families start talking a little greasy as if they're doing you a favor as a black American, as a foundational black American. Like they they allowed you to marry into their family as some kind of favor. No, you got to check that right out the gate. So just as long as they're not being disrespectful to the lineage, you know, that's cool. Just, you know, let them know what's happening. It ain't going to be no damn disrespect whatsoever. Um, and again, your wife needs to know the history. She needs to know the history, especially if you guys are going to possibly have children because you guys are married. So, you know, children will come into play. I should ask my man if they got any kids. So the kids are going to be half FBA. So the kids need to know their lineage. So that means their mama needs to know the truth about the lineage and um, the spirit of foundational black Americans and how we get out. Um, but yeah, if you're married to some of these folks who are foreigners, don't let them show any disrespect. Because when 
especially a Kenyan or anybody. I'm not singling out Kenyans, but Kenya has the Kibera slum, which is the largest slum in Africa. They got like a huge ass slum with about a million people in the slum. It's the biggest slum on the whole continent of Africa. They're not at liberty to say anything. And again, you've had You've heard some of the Kenyans call up here trying to talk greasy, talking about some damn black on black crime. Sit down. No, we don't let that happen whatsoever. We don't play that game. It's going to be respect. See, that's the thing. We got to stand on that. I made a decision long ago about not letting anybody from the tether class come over here and show disrespect to any of us. You're just not at liberty to do so. And um, let's get um, Shiki or Sheki. Is it Shiki or Sheki? How do I pronounce it? Shiki or Sheki? Unmute your microphone, if you will, please. All right, Shiki, Sheki. All right, while we're waiting on that person to come on through. We're going to get some more people in here. Um, let's get um, Meet You God. Meet You God in the building. What's going on, family? How are you? Meet You God in the building. Hop on, sir. All right, y'all. Come on. Let's get it together, guys. All right, so he's not on. Let me get these folks out. If they're not talking, um, Shecky, you you good? You want to try it again? What are we doing? Shiki, Shecky, whatever your name is. All right, let me get him out of here. Uh, let's get Indy Left Biz. What's up, Indy? Indy, hop in. Yeah, what's happening, Tariq? I'm good, man. How are you, brother? Man, I'm good, man. I just want to shout you out with all the success you have, and thank you for sharing me and Wani's space about uh, the, the racial discrimination going on here in Kenton, North Carolina. I really appreciate that. Absolutely. Uh, um, I wanted to talk to you because my, my grandfather, he passed back in April. He was 99 years old. Wow. Um, and he was a part of an exclusive group in the U.S. Army called the Red Ball Express. Okay. And I know you do documentaries like uh, talking about the Maroons and how they fought. And my grandfather, you know, fought in that exclusive uh, battalion or whatever. And like if he didn't deliver those weapons to the people fighting on the front lines and, and Nazi you know, England, different parts back then during World War II, if, if the, his his mission wasn't successful and, and he didn't get those weapons to the front line, they probably would have lost a lot of parts of that war. And oh, he yeah. didn't get a GI Bill or anything like that. I was wondering if you would be interested in, you know, doing a film on a lot of these black soldiers back in, you know, World War II that came back home and was still treated like boys or didn't even have any rights after they went and fought. Right. Yeah, that's something I might look into a little bit later. Thank you for the call. But yeah, yeah, my family, you know, my uncle fought over there in World War II, over there in Nazi Germany. And remember, there's a lot of brothers going in them concentration camps rescuing people out of them camps, only to come back here and have people like the Levitt brothers, who were Jewish brothers, discriminating against black people, creating these suburbs, and black people couldn't get in these suburbs. So the irony of that was was real heavy. You know, our families over there risking their lives, getting people out of them camps, and to come over here, and they're, they're, they're giving the same type of anti-black discrimination. And the Levitt brothers, they fought all the way to the Supreme Court to keep black folks out of them suburbs. And not only could we not get in them suburbs. We couldn't get them GI bills. We couldn't get them GI housing loans like everybody else could get after we sat over here and, and put in work in the war. You did? So we were not able to build that generational wealth. See, those GI bills, that created the white middle class. 
Remember, white people weren't bawling out for that long. That's why they liked the 1950s so much. That's when they were able to get those suburban homes and um, have the yard with the white picket fences. That started in the 1950s. That's why white people love the 50s. I remember back in the day, even when I was in high school or junior high, they would have like 50s parties and they love the 50s. That was their decade. When people talk about the good old days, they're talking about the 1950s. When they could go to these all white suburbs because, you know, they used to live in these rural areas or these urban areas right next to black folks even though it was still segregated, you know, they were like right across the tracks, but with the suburbs, they could be farther away from black folks. And they had these all white enclaves and they had these all white jobs and these all white unions. All of that was popping in the 1950s. That's why there was so much backlash in the 1960s. See the, the, the riots and the uprising and the civil rights movement in the 1960s, that was a result from all of the economic deprivation that was so damn rigid in the 50s. We're just being locked out of every damn thing. So we fought back in the 60s and said, damn that. All right. But I do got some, I do have some documentary project ideas that I want to work on. I do want to do the, the West Coast version of Microphone Check. There's a lot of films that I want to do. I want to do, I want to do something about Dr. Frances Cress Welsing. I really want to do something about her life. You know, that was one of my idols, and I don't think she gets the appreciation that she deserves. We really need to recognize that sister and her contribution. So I, I've been wanting to do a documentary about her. Um, another documentary that I want to do, like this brother called up talking about the fighters in the world. War two and all of that. Look, I, there's a lot of black soldiers and fighters and rebels that has to be recognized. The Knights of Liberty, um, that was a black organization. And I, you heard me talk about them before, right before the Civil War. These guys were planning for a decade to kill all of the slave owners in, in America. They had a plot and it was about to be successful because it wasn't infiltrated. They, they had a plot and a plan and a scheme to form an organization that was secret and they kept it secret. And at a certain date, they were gonna put the green light on and start running up in the plantations and getting rid of all of the slave owners and they were gonna stop slavery in this country. They were gonna do what the black Seminoles did in Florida. And you go look at the movie American Maroon. American Maroon is on Amazon. You can stream that on Amazon Prime. I think you can buy it for $9 and rent it for a dollar. So you can go to Amazon Prime and get that now. Watch American Maroon. Um, that story is not really, well, the story about the Black Seminoles, we talk about it in that movie because that story has been buried. The Black Seminoles basically got rid of slavery in Florida. And they were burning down plantations down there and freeing a lot of people and whooping the brakes off the U.S. Army. They don't like talking about that, them getting beat up by them black men. It was only a small group of them. The black Seminoles beat the brakes off the U.S. Army. They took a major L. That's why they don't like talking about that. <clears throat> Dade County and Jacksonville. Dade was a white man who got slaughtered by the black Seminoles. They chopped him up in pieces. They were putting in major work out there in Florida. They don't like to talk about when they took an L. Man. So we got to understand the game. And we have to tell these narratives. We have to tell these stories. There's a reason why they won't, down in Florida, history ban, especially Florida history. They don't like talking about that Florida history. That's why they really want to ban and bury that Florida history. Because you know, we were, we were putting in a lot of work down there. And also when the white explorers went down there, they described what they saw. They saw black people down there when they went down there. So there's always been black people in Florida. And then the black maroons. And then they had, they had Fort Negro. You had a Negro fort down there. So you had black people putting in major work out there in Florida. All right, let's get, um, let's get Ben Ben.
Ben, Ben in the building. <clears throat> ben, what's up, brother? Hey, my brother. Man, you're a good researcher, Doc. I was just hearing what you were saying. You, you <laughs> I got to give you your credit. You are a good researcher. Thank you uh, so much. Uh, I would like you to do actually something on uh, the Bible, talking about the church fathers. That would be good, really. Mm. Many, many of them were African, and this is before the transatlantic slave trade. So we have a right to that lineage also. I think that would be interesting. Mm. Okay. Uh, I'll look into that. Well, thank you so much, brother. Let's get, um, let me see. Uh, we got a lot of people in here. Um, who is this, Anthony? Let's get Anthony K. Let's get Anthony K. And let me see. What's up, Anthony? Let's get Anthony in here. What's up, Tariq? Thanks for having me. I just want to say real quick, shout out to uh, Sincere Love the God, who's the homie from Atlanta, and yes. uh, who put me on to you. Um, and I appreciate you dearly, man. Um, honestly, as a, as a Mexican from California, I just want to say I appreciate everything you do, man. Um, I just want to say real quick, I, I just jumped in on the on the space, but I do want to say that can we say that the Australian team chose that girl to do the breakdancing Olympics as a mockery to hip hop? Can we say that? Yeah, uh, yeah that was horrible. No, yeah. Uh, but it was on purpose, right? Like, there's no way that the people who watched her uh, uh, rehearse or whatever, like, to get on were like, oh, yeah, this is representative of hip-hop culture. They did this because, and, and, and the Australians have a history of this. I don't know if you're familiar with Chris Lilly, the comedian who had an HBO show back in the day. He had a character named S. Dot Mouse, and it was like a mockery of hip-hop. Like, Australians are just, you know, they're outwardly like that. So it's like, this didn't th this didn't shock me as like oh yeah they probably just sent a representative and they were like they knew it was the first annual and they just wanted to make a mockery of hip hop because they know it's anti black to do it so right. they just did it on purpose yeah yeah i believe there's some credence to that man because yeah that was what that woman was doing was so damn silly and ridiculous and just a lot of stuff they were doing up there was real janky and I felt a certain way and I knew they were going to do it. That's why I did microphone check. This was why I kept saying, we got to get the FBA family up there. We need to get some of these original pioneers as the judges uh, because they're, they're making a mockery of it. They're taking the flavor and the soul out of it. And this is what we got. Let's get, um, let me see. Who is this? Um, let me see. Yeah, we got a lot of people in here. Let's get, okay, I'm trying to see. Let's get the Black Nuremberg. I think that's your name. The Black Nuremberg. Let's get you in here. The Black Nuremberg. I haven't seen you in here in a minute. Black Nuremberg, hop in. You can unmute your microphone, sir. Unmute your microphone if you would like to speak. Go ahead, brother. I see you unmute your mic, but you're not speaking. All right. Let's get um let me see. I right, don't don't get don't raise your hand to get on if you're not gonna speak. Um da -da -da -da, let's get Who's this person? Let's get explained in here. Let's get explained in the building. Explain. What's up, brother? What's up with you, family? Um, I was just, I'm at work right now, man. I gotta be quick with it. I got three questions for you, real quick. Um, so I want to ask you because I, I got into this space a little late. Uh, did you see Trump's 20 point plan? Um, uh, did you hear the space he was on on Twitter with uh, Elon Musk and then? I want to follow up about the pastor from Detroit that was supposed to get back to you and uh, Marcel about having to sit down with them and trying to, you know what I'm saying, see, see if we can uh, have a powwow. Right. Yeah, great questions. Uh, now, we haven't heard, I haven't heard back from that pastor, have not heard back. Um, 
and again the the pastor sound like the tap shoes were pitter pattering and it sounds like that that pastor is from a non FBA background because every time we kept asking about his background he got real defensive. So I'm um, I'm thinking there might have been some Bammy or Joloff going on there. So him actually kind of making something go down where we can have a sit down. I don't think he has the clout for that. Um, another thing, I heard a little bit of Trump space with Elon, and they were basically talking about Trump getting popped in the ear, and they were going on and on about that. So I kind of tuned in and tuned out so i didn't hear anything substantive um now that 20 point plan again that the 20 point plan that trump has we're not included in that he's not talking about doing anything specifically for us so i don't know what their bag is and again this is why i'm not supporting anybody unless they have something specifically for us and i'm not supporting any candidate who does not have something specifically for foundational black Americans. You know, that's the criteria for me. I will choose the couch. Um, you know, one is no better than the other. I, I think Kamala is just a little bit worse than Trump because Kamala is putting together policies that she won't even talk about, and they're actively harming us. That immigration thing is harming us majorly. So that's what it is. And Trump and those guys, Trump, they could have easily been way ahead of Kamala Harris. But Trump, he's pandering to that damn MAGA base, and you ain't got to do that. This dude, uh, this was an easy win, and they, they haven't, they're a few tie-in with Kamala, and Kamala is actually beating them in certain areas. So that's ridiculous. Yeah. And the dude had it made. Yeah. And Kamala, you know, what they're doing, they're using their media. They got a big media apparatus backing them up. So, you know, they're signal boosting any message she has. They they got her all over the place. They got a lot of money with propaganda behind her with all of these troll bots and these um, democratic shills all in our spaces all the time. So it's a lot of astroturf coming from the Democrat side. Yeah. Man. But Trump, all Trump really has to do is give something tangible to foundational black Americans. Trump is in there. But I, I, Trump, I guess he don't want to alienate none of the base. None of that MAGA base. Yeah, because Kamala, she's already said what she ain't going to do for no damn black people. She's already said it. That's why I ain't rocking with Kamala whatsoever. She's already said what the hell she ain't going to do. Yeah, so I'm cool on her, period. Kamala has already let it be known she ain't going to do nothing for us. All right, let's get reform justice in here. All right, what's up, reform justice? Reform justice, what's happening? Go ahead, reform. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, I can I can a little bit. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, I was wanting to ask him, what do you think about um Trump comparing himself to MLK or his crowd size anyway? Oh, when did he do that? I didn't hear that. Oh, yeah, at a um, conference, a press conference, he compared his crowd size to MLK's crowd size, even though MLK had like 250,000, 250, a quarter of a million people. So he's trying to, you know, compare himself to MLK for some reason. It was kind of strange and awkward. Well, yeah, well, I, did, I don't know. I didn't hear it, and I don't know the context of it, so I really can't speak on that. Now, are you even in the UK? I mean, are you in the United States, or are you in the UK? No, I'm in the. I'm in Ireland, yeah. You you where? In Ireland. You're in the island. Yeah, Ireland, Ireland. Besides oh, you, you're in Ireland. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but what part of Africa are you from? Nigeria. Nigeria. How long have you been over there in Ireland? And um, twenty years. Okay. What what do you do over there in Ireland? Yeah, well, no, that's getting to a bit of docks and stuff, so. 
Yeah. No one's going to dox you. Okay. Well, nobody's going to dox you. I just wanted to know what kind of work you were in. But it's all right. You don't, you don't, okay. Because nobody's doxing you. So, um, so you were over there in Ireland. You're a Nigerian in Ireland, but you're, you're very concerned about the politics here. Now, what, well, what, I'll tell you what, if when a country has, you know, a base in your country, you can talk about them. <laughs> right. But you're, you're not in your country. You're, you're in Ireland now. You're not even in Nigeria no more. Yeah, well, even in Nigeria, they have a base there, too. So they have a base everywhere. Yeah. Well, there's no base. They don't have a base in Ireland. They do. The Shannon airports, they have a, a, a setup there. The, U, the U.S. has a setup in the Shannon airport. So, uh, Which airport? Shannon. Shannon airport. Is it an embassy or is it a like a military base? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a military base. Yeah, it's not it's not an embassy. It's a, oh, you know, okay. Okay. Um, so who, who do you support in this election since, you know, there's a military base in both of your homelands and well, in the, in the places you live, what's, um, who do you support? Well, yeah, I think, you know, Kamala is the best uh, choice because, uh, um, Trump is just riling up every fascist and every racist in every country right now, to be honest. So, you know, even the, the Italians are, the Italians are doing Nazi salutes in Italy now, you know, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't think Trump is is good for international, you know, security at all. Really? Yeah. Well, over there in the UK, there's race riots now. You know, we, yeah. saw, we saw the race riots going on over there. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, and Trump, I think... You know, Trump ain't even, he ain't even in office, so yeah. You got Tommy Robinson running around the UK running amok yeah yeah and uh trump kicked all that off he he gave tommy the the chest to come out and all that stuff when he tommy, tommy robbins has been around way before trump he's well, before trump was in office yeah, tommy, he, he was on the ground he was on the ground until um trump came up so and trump just gave everyone the green light to act to crash out he gave all the races the right to crash out no, no, because uh, no, because we over here, we were getting the crash out under Obama. We were getting targeted under Obama. These race soldiers working in law enforcement, that was under Obama. When the FBI started putting out memos saying there's a bunch of white supremacists joining law enforcement, that was under Obama and Bush and all of those guys. So, yeah, yeah that was, you know, that was, that was at least, you know, compacted in the. In the into the you know police system but you know general race is just coming out and 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 you know trump really trump retweeted a guy giving him the nazi salutes and saying white power so trump just did a whole bunch of nonsense that made you know the common racist feel like he can he can do whatever so well, no, well, the thing is the common racists can't run up on no foundational black americans they learned that in montgomery you see, so they need the white supremacists to have military backing of law enforcement. Well, wait, oh. in, in Montgomery, it was literally a fight. They 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 did fight, but you you like black Americans won, but it was still a scuffle. Yeah, they, they, the white supremacists got their ass toe up. Yeah, they That's did, the but they, they still engaged. That's, right, but yeah, this is what I'm saying. They tested a line, and they didn't. They didn't know their brothers was going to come all out the water on that ass. So this yeah. is what I'm saying. The average everyday white supremacists, they know not to really pull up on no FBA brothers. They We don't play like that over here. A Tommy Robinson couldn't run amok over here with all that bullshit. Um, yeah. it, 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 he would get that ass handled real quick. The white supremacists who are non-police, they don't really run up on brothers out here like that. We don't we don't really play like that out here. No disrespect to my UK brothers and sisters. No, but the UK brothers came out too. They came they, you know see some, some of them do put in work. Some of them put in work. Yeah, they came out they came out in the masses and yeah. shut down they, they shut down the whole street and it was an anti it became an anti racist um, um festival basically when the UK brothers came out. So yeah, but yeah, our issue is with the white supremacists within law enforcement. They got to be in law enforcement and they got to get that protection of the military because that's what it is. When they join law enforcement, they get military so, protection. What do you think about the immunity then that Trump is, is you know... They already got it, brother. They already no, but he wants, he, wants to, he wants to completely, you know, nationalize they it. They already got it. 
Kamala Harris and those guys, they're not punishing no damn cops federally. They're not doing that. Obama protected cops. He signed a blue law to protect Obama didn't. Obama, oh, listen, brother, Obama, they didn't prosecute any cops for black people when he was in office and we were getting slaughtered. They already have immunity, sir. At least Trump is just being honest with it. Okay, I'm, I don't like I don't like that argument when you say an honest. I don't want an honest, open, racist. I do. I do. I don't you, want a black. Fa- I don't want. I don't want a black face of white supremacy. Give me okay, the real. Because okay, what? You, no, no. Because what happens is they give us an Obama, and then we sit on our damn hands while we're getting slaughtered because there's a black face in here giving a bunch of damn excuses. Okay, That's do you know the, the the ending conclusion of an uh, honest fascist? Is it's Hitler? That's just you. Just want a bold Hitler to run, run amok and you know bring up gas chambers and slavery. You just want a full racist person. What does that mean? You you're getting that. You're getting that already. Okay, getting, that's not you're getting the gas chamber. See, I would rather somebody tell me there there's a gas chamber, and instead of somebody telling me it's an amusement park, that's yeah. the thing. You're See, crashing the, out, though. That's crash out talk. Biden and Biden and uh, Obama and Biden, they, they're telling you the gas chambers. That's, a, that's an amusement park. They're, they're telling you, no, no, no. We're trying to get something done. We're trying to not put you in the gas chamber. We got the HR 40, and we're just trying to do a study. And, you know, they, they're playing that kind of game. So you rather you rather open genocide and open murders of black people like, no, in the first, no, that's tether talk. Ain't no damn gen. Ain't gonna be no genocide. But that's well, you just said that. You just said you want the gas chambers. We, like, I know I did. I'm making an analogy, not no. not a literal. I'm making an analogy. We're making an analogy. But you right. often say you often say you want the open racist, it, the open fascist. So no, no, because no, 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 because that's that. Af- y'all, you know, West African dudes, y'all like being lied to because y'all sit up here lying to each other. Well, you that's said you I, want the open racist. Uh, that's not my language. An honest racist, yes. I want an honest racist, not open, just honest. Just honest about your shit. Just let me know what you where you're coming from. Yeah, like Kamala, that... Kamala Harris is an anti-black racist. Kamala Harris is an anti-black damn racist. But she's isn't... just up here dancing to hip hop and using slang while still practicing anti-black racism. Okay. I don't when you talk like that. What? When you talk about pandering, when you talk about pandering, you don't think Trump panders with 50 Cent and all that? No, he's just playing a song while he's coming out. Trump hasn't harmed black people with any of his policies. Kamala has. And she's running around here talking about all the HBCUs she didn't went to and all the collard greens she didn't cooked. And what do you has think? done damage to black people. Black what do you people, think? That- hold on, brother. Black people are complaining over here now because of Kamala's policies, flooding the zone with immigrants and these illegals. That's a problem for us, sir. And you don't that, think Trump has done any racist stuff? Like, what do you think Central Park 5 will think about what you're saying? He wasn't in office, sir. Yeah, that was horrible, but he wasn't in office. He hasn't put a policy together that harmed us. Trump wasn't in office then. I'm talking about policies. Trump has not put a policy together to harm black people. Kamala has. The Biden administration has. This is what I'm saying, sir. You put a policy to harm black people. Yes, this immigration thing harms black people harms us tremendously. That Asian hate crime thing, they were using black people as the boogeyman. We were being targeted with the Asian hate crimes. That was us being targeted. We get targeted with the anti the, the homophobia stuff. They target us in order to give benefits and bills to protect the white LGBT. You understand? We are getting targeted as black business owners by these immigrants that they let flood the zone and they give them positions and these immigrants sit up in here and plot against black people, especially out here in California. Their secret tapes being revealed by these Democrat immigrants sitting up here plotting on the black community, talking about diverting the resources so that we don't get them. That's why our businesses are being sabotaged in California left and right. And I'm a recipient of of the sabotage. So yes, those democratic policies are harming us specifically. Trump hasn't done that. 
that's just the long and short of it, right? Trump, Trump hasn't done anything racist in your eyes. Trump can do no he wrong in your eyes. He hasn't done no policies, policies to harm black people collectively. Like well, he's, saying, has. Well, he's saying, he's saying he's, he's, he's about to start now. If he hasn't done before, he's definitely oh, about to start. Oh, he's going to do it in the future. No, he ain't. He hadn't done it. If he, he was going to do it, he would have done it. He didn't do it when he was in office and this whole boogeyman thing. Ooh, Project 2025 coming. Wait till you see that. No, no, no. The Project 2025 is here with Kamala's ass. Well, if we, someone's telling you they're going to do something, you better believe them. That's what I'm saying. Right? Yeah, when somebody say what they ain't going to do for black people, you damn sure better believe them. And Actually, she did say she did say she she, get, she she supports reparations on the back on the Breakfast Club, so you should oh, watch that episode. That means for everybody. When she no, says, no 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 Charlamagne, no no Charlamagne cornered her. Charlamagne cornered her, and she said, "Yes, yeah, she is." No, that woman has got our Freedmen's Bank, and he's using that to talk about giving benefits to every damn body. We know what she says. She's up here talking about using black people who got scammed by the Freedman Bank to give resources to blacks and Latinos and marginalized groups and minorities. So if she talks about reparations, she means for minorities, just like with this whole thing okay. with black farmers who got disenfranchised and discriminated against. Black farmers specifically had a lawsuit, but they only let the lawsuit go through if they can include minorities. So they okay. always got pack other people on to undermine us. This is what so I'm if saying. She, if she's not for reparations, well, you believe her. But if she is for reparations, you don't believe her. I don't get she, this. She ain't. She's not. She has already said with her full chest that she ain't gonna do nothing that only benefits black people. And like she also you said, said she does support it like on the Breakfast Club. Didn't. Sure. And like you said, when somebody tells you something, you better believe it. And I believe her when she says she ain't gonna do nothing for black folks, sir. I believe her. I she also believe her because she says she does. She will do something for black folks on the Breakfast Club. So no, she didn't. No, she didn't. No, she didn't. No, Why would I didn't. lie about that? The video is online. The video is online. Because she didn't say that she was going to do anything specifically for black people. We got her on video saying what she ain't going to do, sir. So you're not going to spend that. She's not going to provide reparations for us. They would have came out and supported it. They would have had a damn executive order already. Okay. Let me They're ask you one the question. No, 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 no. Let me ask no, 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 no. She's vice president now. How come they haven't given it? I don't know. I don't know. But let me ask you one there you, let me ask you one question. there you go. Okay. One, one question. Answer, Why are you okay. trying to get a sit down with there you Trump? Go. Why are you trying to get a sit down with Trump and not Biden and not uh, because Biden and those guys already told us what the hell they're not going to do. And, and you think Trump, and Trump the Republicans will? Trump is a businessman, and I believe that we can get something out of Trump before we can get something out of Kamala specifically for us. Well, that's a that's a tall hill to climb. I'll tell you that. No, I don't think so. No. I think that we could get some type of tangible benefit out of the Trump administration before we could with Kamala. Kamala has already told us what she ain't going to damn do. So I okay. believe that we can get something out of Trump. I think that we, we sat down with him and chopped You're up gonna get something out of, we, out of Reagan's party, out of Lee Atwater's party. You're going to get something out of that party. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think so. Well, Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, we, this is business. This is business. This ain't about sitting around here hugging and dancing and kissing on folks. This is about business. And um, Lyndon B. Johnson was a damn racist. Lyndon B. Johnson used the N word. Yeah, but he was a liberal. He was a Democrat. That's why you got the civil rights. So, right. But Dr. Martin Luther King was a Republican, sir. So um, a lot of black people at that time were very conservative. A lot the of only black the only way black people have progressed in America is through the blue party. Whichever party was blue at the time, that's the true. only way. Uh, we've been with the blue party for the last 60 years. That's not really working yeah, out. Yeah, but you just used LBJ as an example of the blue party progress. You're not going to get anything from the red party. No, no. We He got busy because the streets got busy. He was forced to sign that thing. So No red presidents would be forced to sign anything. Do the what? Up. No red, no red president, no Republican president will be forced to feel any type of pressure 
No Republican <laughs> president will feel any type of pressure. How do you how do you know what they'll be forced to do? How do you because know? they haven't done anything? They literally haven't done, only LBJ has done stuff. And so, that's because the black community forced him to do it. He didn't do that out the, the kindness of his heart. Yeah, I know that there were riots. There were riots and the cities were right. burning down. But, yeah, they but, had the streets turned up. They had to Yeah, do but it. no Republican president would feel any pressure. The Republican president would send an army. And and we're and not sir. We dealt with we deal with the army all the time. So we're not like y'all over there in no, West Africa. We're not afraid. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying we're, we're not afraid president. of Sir, we, we've been dealing with the National Guard and the Army for the last 200 years. We're not afraid of them. We stand up to that, sir. We were dealing with the Army in the 60s. No, my to, point is, my so point they, is, no, you no, wouldn't no, have gotten no, anything. No, no, you wouldn't no, have gotten no, anything from a Republican sir, no. president. Sir, you're pro, you're projecting your failure. Sir, you're not in your homeland. We, we're not going to flee. You just fled your homeland. That's I'm not, not talking a, about immig immigration stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. You want us to have the same fleeing mentality. Y'all didn't stand up. I'm, I'm talking about what I'm a talking Republican about president would have done. Fighting. You're giving a failed fleeing disposition that you're trying to project on us, and we don't have I'm it. Saying think, a sir? Republican president would have committed genocide at those riots. He wouldn't and have listened to any pressure. I, listen, listen what I'm saying. Ain't nobody going to commit no damn genocide on us because we'll start taking people out too. Genocide okay. goes both ways. We ain't going to just... It have just been a we, civil war at that point. We as foundational black Americans ain't just going to let somebody sit up and wipe us the hell out. We going to fight back. We ain't going to be on no inner tube like y'all fleeing you, to Ireland. You remind me... We, you we remind me of... of, of, of Do you understand? You remind me of... No, of um, we going to fight back, sir. We'll okay. Stop Stop them from trying to play that genocide thing on us. We don't play like that. We know how to get on code very quickly to stop the BS, sir. We ain't going to be on no inner tube fleeing with Joloff Rice in a book bag somewhere. We don't play that game. Don't project your failures onto us. All right, all right listen, but you remind me of hillbillies that, that, are, that are always looking out for the government trying to take their guns. But if, if a government comes down on you, like, and they have their own military-style guns, and you think you, your your rifle, your your lone rifle is going to do anything against the military? And okay, I guess, dude, we have been a minority, and we've been fighting the military for two, three hundred years. We've been fighting them since the Maroon Wars and the Seminole Wars, brother. We have. When I was in Florida fighting the U.S. Army and beating them using guerrilla warfare tactics that they study now. We had black folks in the Great Dismal Swamp. Bro, they dropped I, a bomb on, on Tulsa, bro. They dropped a bomb know, on Tulsa. I know, and? And they and, kill people. You can't fight and, a plane from the air. You can't fight a plane and, from the air, bro. They dropped a bomb on Tulsa, and they wiped it out. And? And that's and that's what I'm saying that the military has way more firepower than in white or black commoners on the ground, and you won't be able to beat all that firepower. That's my and nigga, we have we've stood up to it, dude. I've been around this country when they had the the so called I don't like to call the Black Lives Matter uprisings because that's a liberal term. But we had the justice uprisings. I went all around the country, Ferguson, Baltimore, Atlanta, all over the country. We were going up against the military. They had military tanks and weapons and grenades and all of that stuff. We're not afraid of that, sir. We're just not afraid of it, dude. We lost that fear a long time ago. These people have always used the military against us. And we just keep fighting. That's what makes us different, sir. You understand? Yeah, sure. But well, the, the military is still the military, I guess. That's why it's the biggest military. That's we why it's got, the biggest military in the world. We have of Majara, sir. We have a Majara spirit that, that keeps us resilient and keeps us fighting. They were fighting the military in the 1960s, didn't back down. That's why we were getting laws passed. That's why we were getting bills passed, because we weren't backing down. We would stand up to it. Not but afraid. People, people. people still died and still got put Not in prison. Right. It's so. war. That's a, sometimes people going to die on both sides.
You understand? Sometimes people are going to die on both sides, and people were dying on both sides. Don't let people tell you about just the bombs that were dropped and all of that, because even when black folks were getting lynched, you had black folks who were fighting back. You had black people who were shooting at some of them lynch mobs. If they, they, if I'm going to get lynched, I'm taking some of y'all with me. Robert, of course you beat lynch mobs. Of course you beat lynch mobs and common white people. I'm talking about military personnel. That's what I'm talking. Yeah. I'm not talking about. And yeah. yeah, sir. Again, that doesn't scare us. We we we've already dealt with them. We deal with them all the time anyway. And um, it's easy to beat lynch mobs. That's that's standard. Like that's that's a fade in the water type event. Of course you can beat them, but I'm talking about people who have, um, 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 you know, vests to protect themselves and all that stuff, and bombs and grenades and yeah, that's a different level. Well, the thing is, what we're not going to do is get on somebody's inner tube and flee. That's of course not, not. That's what I'm saying. Not. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying. The, the right wing is more likely to use the military, but the... No. The, the military, talking about the right wing use the military. Man, when the, the Mike Brown and the Freddie Gray, when those uprisings were happening, that was Obama and those guys sending in all of that military-grade weaponry. That was Obama and those dudes. That was Obama and the Democrats sending in all them tanks and... Um, Clinton and those guys back in the 90s sending in the military. Right or left don't make a difference. See, sir, you are over there in your in your homeland. Y'all got the LBJ as an example. Use listen, LBJ as an example, though. So listen, uh my 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 brother McCall is making a good point. Y'all over there in your homeland, the Chinese are whooping you guys with shea butter sticks. You understand? Y'all getting whooped over there by the Chinese. And they they ain't even got no major weapons like that. Y'all, y'all just y'all get shook at the sign of any type of hostility from a foreigner. Y'all get to running, and that's just not our disposition, sir. No disrespect. The Asians come over there and they throw some, some, some uh, rocks at your ass and hit you with a couple of switches and belts, and then you hop on inner tube trying to get. I'm to not. Enter. I'm not. I'm not slagging, I'm not insulting um, African Americans or Black Americans. I support reparations. I support everything. I support the cultural movement. I'm talking about the party that is more in line to to help Black but Americans. Not, I can't speak on any of that because you're not from the culture. You don't understand it, sir. You come from a culture where y'all just kind of run and flee. And I'm not being insulting, sir. The first thing in your mind is to go somewhere else, to flee somewhere. That's not our mindset. Your thing is, oh, I can't do it. I just got to go somewhere where somebody's. Um, well, I came here when I was somebody, a kid, so I didn't really fight for something. Somebody had to stand fight for something, sir. I didn't, I came here when I was a kid, so most of the people you speak to, they probably moved when they were a child, when they were an infant. So right, so you were taught at a young age to flee. All right, you were taught at a young age, so you were bred to be a fleer. We're not, sir. We're now, not. You, now you're we were, doing. We were bred to stand on business as foundational Black Americans. That's what we do. We stand on business, and we're going to continue to stand on business because we have a majora spirit. We have a certain spirit. Well, I'm that- just saying, like trying to get do a sit down with Trump to get reparations. Like you said, yeah. you know, he's trying. He's trying to cater to the MAGA movement. You're not gonna get anything with with. You don't know with, that. You don't know that, sir. You know, you know, you're not at liberty to even speak on it because you haven't gotten anything from your homeland. You fled, so you can't tell us what we're going to get because you don't have a template to show us. Well, I'll, I'll put it like this. I put it like this. You the right wing, the, the right wing sure. are telling you. The right wing are telling you you're, what you're not gonna get. So. We're not take. We can't take advice from somebody who comes from a fleeing. They don't liberal. take my advice. I'm saying take the right wing's advice. Right, right no, no, no. We're going to take the spirit of Majora's advice. We're going to go where, where the spirit tells us. You when, better go to LBJ's party, bro. Go to LBJ's party and see. We're going to go to where the spirit tells us to go to get some damn justice, okay? Go That's to JFK's we, party. Go to JFK's party. We're not going to go to the inner tube and float away, okay? Well, go to JFK's party. They have a so better. Don't worry time. about it. We're, we're going to be all right, okay? I'll just make sure y'all don't get ate up by sharks in the Mediterranean fleeing 
from your homeland, sir. Okay? That's, that sounds good, but yeah. All right. Thank you so much. I, I don't want no damn advice from somebody who's projecting their fleeing, scared disposition onto us. You can't tell us what we're going to get and what we're not going to get. Yeah, I'm, uh, this is business for me. I'm willing to sit down and talk business with somebody or anybody who wants to give tangibles to my people. I don't want to sit down with somebody who thinks having a twerk off at a presidential campaign is some type of tangible. Yeah, they ain't really nothing to negotiate at that point. Yeah, I don't really want to sit around and sit down with Kamala. They've already told us what they're not going to do. I don't. What are we going to sit down with them for? They've already told us they ain't going to do a damn thing. They they already they're in power. What do I need to sit down with them for? They're already in power. You know, and he's talking about what well, Kamala Harris said on the Breakfast Club. She's going to give reparations. Damn it, they're in the White House now. What's stopping them? You see. The tablets don't really think this stuff out. Kamala and Biden are in power now and ain't done a damn thing for us now. You understand? So let's stop playing these games. Let's get on here. Who wants to follow this up? Um, John Horse. Let's get um, T. Frazier in. Let's get T. Frazier. T. Frazier, go ahead, brother. Then I get John Horse. Tariq, what's going on, brother? How you doing, man? I'm good, man. How are you, sir? Man, good, good. Man, people kill me, man. They be from everywhere but America, every country but. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we'll get on here and argue up and down, you know, about what we're dealing with right here. Crazy, man. <laughs> Crazy. But uh, hey, I just want to say, man, I, I feel like both candidates are, are trash, in my opinion. But I do agree with you that we probably have a better shot with Trump. I would say, um, if nothing else, man, it's, you know, it's going to sound funny, but us FBAs, man, fighting for reparations or whatnot, at least with Trump in office, man, we, we got a shot with trying to become friends or be friend Kim Kardashian, get her to go into the White House on our behalf and do whatever she do in the basement but, to get all these FBAs free and gang leaders free. <laughs> it's yeah. something she got going on in there. So if push come to shove, we might have to go that route, man. Man. But um, I, I do have, I got a quick question for you. Um, is there a code or a code of structure as far as for FBAs on um, how to vote or like the best way to go about it or whatnot, knowing uh, what our main and common goal is? Like, how do we come together? Because if everybody, you know, we get off Twitter and everybody going back to their own living rooms with different opinions and you know what I mean? Yeah, man, look, man, it's all about empowerment and not symbolisms, man. We got to be real. And the problem is we're not getting the tangibles we're supposed to get because we got a lot of off-code ass people mm -hmm. who, number one, afraid of power and perfectly fine with symbolic nothing burgers. And three, people who just want attention. And when you have people from the Democratic Party come around giving certain Negroes attention, that's good enough for them. We got to get that childlike mindset out of here and start thinking in terms of business. What are they going to bring to the table? And if they're not going to give us something, let's hold our vote until they get the damn picture. We got to be very strategic and learn how to handle business and make power moves. That's what we got to get on code with. We got to understand power and not be afraid of power. We got the numbers and we should use the numbers to our advantage. It's 43 on paper, million of us. I think it's about 47, 48, but on paper, it's 43 million foundation of black Americans. We could use those numbers and make power moves with those numbers. The problem is too many black folks are perfectly fine with symbolic gestures. They come around, the politicians hugging, kissing, dancing, twerking, and they start pandering to that um, low chakra base group who are just satisfied with attention and symbolic gestures. And we got to get off that childlike mentality. We just got to get off of it. John Horace, hop on. Yeah, what's good, Tariq? How you doing, John? You good? Yeah, I'm pretty good, bro. Look, hey, one of the main reasons why you got a lot of the tethers, you know, they coming, they calling in from like all over the world and stuff like that, bro. 
they really want Kamala to get in so that way they can come over here illegally. That's really bingo, what it is. Bingo, bingo. There that's, it is. That's, bingo. that's really what it is. All these people calling from Canada and all of that. They just, look, y'all niggas, y'all slow niggas, come on the scene, vote for Kamala so we can come over and then we can just basically replace y'all and, you know what I'm saying, do all of that. That's basically what it really is. In a nutshell, that's really real talk. And that's what it is. My man hit it right on the money. That's really what it is, family. And I'm gonna be I'm gonna be yeah. honest. I'm gonna be honest though, Tariq. Look, if Kamala does get in, as uh Dr. uh Dr. Claude Anderson says, in a certain sense, I think we like if, if she does get in and you know our folks do decide to, you know, vote for her and all of this other crazy shit, I feel like black people as a group, we just need more pain. Yeah, it, it's gonna be a beast, man. It, yeah, it's gonna be a beast. If she, need, get, yeah, yeah, we just th- need, we just need more pain. Yeah, thank you, brother. Yeah, if she if she gets in, it's it's gonna be a beast. Y'all don't understand. It's gonna be a beast. Not only that, we're gonna get flooded with these damn um, immigrant groups and tethers. I mean, they're gonna open up the damn floodgates. The schools are going to be. Um, um, sexualized with the kids. They're going to really go overboard with that, which is what they're already doing out here in California. And um, she got old boy as her running mate, the the VP for Kamala. And this dude's talking about putting tampons in boys' restrooms. So that's going to be insane. And we're going to be targeted with that because when our children say, hey, I don't want to do that, the children are going to be labeled homophobic and they're going to start getting punished I'm telling you where this shit is going to go because it's already starting. And again, my one of my sons almost got in trouble because the little kid, and I talked about this some months ago, a little kid said something. I don't know if the kid was joking or whatever. A little Asian kid like, hey, I got a crush on you. And my son was like, man, that's gay as hell. That's gay. And the teachers was like, oh, you can't say that's gay now. You know, We can't say that. I'm like, what? Yeah, they called us talking about yeah. My son said that he said the gay, the kid said something gay. I mean, well, it is. What the hell are you supposed to say? You understand what I'm saying? So they were kind of calling, almost like warning us to a certain degree. So I'm like, okay, I don't like where this is going. That's why a lot of black people in California are moving to Texas. A lot of black people are getting the hell out of California. A lot of people to be honest. You understand? But if Kamala gets in here, it's going to be a beast. It's going to be a beast, man. I don't think people understand the severity of the devastation that's going to be wreaked on black society, foundational black American society, with the tether class being dumped on us. We see what's going on in New York and Chicago. You see with our resources being drained and then then people are going to be elevated into certain positions like they are out here in California where we're being deprived of so many resources that we're supposed to get. It's going to be bad. That's why in all of these liberal cities, you see all these homeless black folks out here who don't have the resources they need, yet you got these immigrants in hotels with credit cards, with EBT cards and all types of money and food that they're getting. Come on, man. It's going to be a beast under these folks. Um, what's your name? Check something? Check in? I don't know how to pronounce your name. Check in, Rosie. You all right, Tariq? Now, where you from, brother? I'm from Zim, bro. But Zim, Zim, I'm, yeah, but I'm uh, currently residing in, in, in England. Okay. What's on your mind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just here to clarify on the numbers you're talking about. Um, uh, we Africans are coming in, we are fleeing from Africa, going to Western countries and all those things. But if you look at the population of Africans, there's a billion of us out there in Africa, different countries, 54 countries of us. And yeah. our population in the Western countries would probably not even make 1%. You guys in the West, you have a very strict regime of picking out who is going to come into your countries. So I'm talking the best of the best. 
only a few of the Africans, especially in Britain, maybe, who come in as um, maybe carers, this, this, that, 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 or uh, small skilled, less skilled jobs. But most of the times, um, students come in programs from Zim, like at the moment, there's so many programs going on from Zim, where you export talent from Zim, Ghana, Nigeria, SA, everywhere, and they end up being in your system, and they end up being some of your bosses and everything else. So I'm not buying this, or oh, we're fleeing this and that, that, that. South Africa is not, in, is not up in flames. It's, a, it's, it's got its political problems, but it's not up in flames. Zim, it's got its issues, but we are not fighting there. So we chose to come in uh, through talent, through work, and um, we've managed to get him into your country, into the system. We've worked hard for it. And then as well, a lot of uh, migration that's coming through the Colombia route, you know, that uh, place that's the dangerous uh, place in, in South America. And then you end up into, is it Panama, and then into Me Mexico, and then into America, uh, that route. Not a lot of Africans are using that route. We don't know about this route. We, we fly in. If maybe, let's say, I'm less skilled or I don't have much of a reason to go to America, I would rather fly in as an African, try my chance at the immigration point, and if I'm, say, sometimes my work, they might give me an asylum, they might give me to, say, get in on uh, whatever, temp temporary visa, whatever, whatever. But we're not using this mass migration of Africans using this um, route to go into America via that way. The more realistic way is the European route where Africans are moving through the Sahel Desert into the North Africa's Libya and then into Europe and then um, trekking to Britain. That is a reality with us Africans. But the numbers as well are quite minuscule because you have to sell a lot of your property. You have to be somebody who has something for you to sell, to buy the people who are going to transport you from either, mainly it's Nigeria. Well, let's, slow down. It's let's slow down. 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 Okay. Are you saying that the immigration numbers are minuscule coming over here? I'm not saying they're minuscule. I'm saying... As for Africans, especially, we have a billion of people in Africa. Okay, slow down, make... slow down, slow down, because I don't want you to make a straw man argument that I didn't make. I'm talking, we're talking about immigration, period, because what happens is you get a bunch of people over here from Africa. I'm not talking about a bunch of people. Uh, I'm just talking about specifically Africans, especially. No, 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 slow down. Africa. Okay, there's no. Because you do have a lot of people from Africa and the Caribbean and South America and all over the Middle East all flooding over together. And it's the same oh, issue. What are them. they using? Don't, don't matter. They're coming from boats, um, South America, all into, over the place. Into U.S. They're coming all over the place. Nah. And the issue is that the problem... We try our chances the problem, at the airports. The problem we... is... God damn, dude. I'm not going to talk over you now. So let's slow this down. All right? Well, it's going to slow that down. The problem is all of these people are coming over from different directions. Usually they're coming in from south of the border. You, you, I don't know what this guy is arguing, some kind of semantics and technicalities. Doesn't matter. We're getting Caribbean, African, Latino, Asian. We're getting a bunch of immigrants coming over and they're being flooded into our communities. And our meager tax dollars are being used to fund them. I don't give a damn about all of the little semantic. Well, then over here in Zimbabwe, it was only 14 came. And in South America, it was 200. And then in, oh, okay. uh, I don't want to get into the little semantics of which country and all of that. They're coming from all over. And You're muting me, uncle. You're muting me. Right. Yeah, yeah, because you're talking over me. We don't do that. Okay. That was, okay, I apologize. I apologize right. for that. Right. Yeah, the, 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 point is, the point is, so many people are coming over, and that's an issue. Thank you. Okay, because you're kind of babbling. All right, thank you. Well, I don't want to hear no tether babble. Um, yeah, the problem is, yeah, don't, don't, it's not minuscule. You, we've seen, have y'all seen these videos and just floods of waves of people coming in from South America? Yeah, no, ain't no minuscule numbers. You got a wave of people coming from the damn border. And he's trying to argue, well, only 20% are African. Okay, damn, don't matter. Dude, that don't matter. 
Man, you got whole communities being set up, the Somalis, and, and, and they're hostile. We've seen this, just like we saw that video, video in Ohio, that hostile woman who some say is Somali. They, the, the different African groups are trying to pawn her off on different folks. But it was a woman who looked Somali calling black folks all types of N-words who work for a medical facility. So, yeah, I don't want to hear about these minuscule numbers. They're over here deep. And they're in positions where they're trying to undermine us, and that's a problem. And we're saying no. And that's what it is. All right? All right, we got a lot of people in here, but I'm not going to be on too, too long because I got stuff to do, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I have stuff to do. Ladies and gentlemen, so listen, go to microphonecheck.com. Check out the movie Microphone Check. Go to rootworkstyle.com, get the rootwork deodorant, rootworkstyle.com, and go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com, get the book Hidden Heroes from A to Z. Also, get your foundational black American flags at officialfba.com. Get your FBA flags. Official.